What's up, guys? Hey, How's man. everything? Good. It's great. So thanks for joining me. Glad thanks to be here. It's my first stage, maybe. I don't know. I've probably been on the stage at some point, but it was just watching a band, so um, <laughs> you can imagine my excitement. Um, so talk to me about this, this year plus. I mean, the albums have a little bit over a year now. Just, just a year. Just about a year. And um, I mean, I, I was saying to you before we got on camera, you guys have kind of become the poster boys for really good Westchester music. Um, you played a lot of you know places in Westchester. You played Pleasantville, but I know you're doing Asbury Park and blah blah blah. Talk to me about the year. I mean, between touring and the album coming out. Well, we put the record out at the end of May of last year, and 1071, the peak right here, picked it up, and they're a pretty big AAA commercial station, and they got on the record pretty heavy, uh, like right out of the gate, and so immediately from that, we were able to sort of spread that nationally. So from there, we were able to, you know, started picking up from really from coast to coast. I mean, you know, Alaska to, you know, everywhere. Um, and so that started to build the story. And, you know, we were just in Relics Magazine, the last issue, and um, uh, No Depression gave this amazing review. And like, so things like that sort of, you know, started to happen. And then we played right here in the big stage, the Capitol Theater opening for uh, Trigger Hippie at the end of uh, March. that was sold out on the show. So, awesome. yeah. <laughs> So it's been it's been, sure. it's awesome. been a really cool year. So so things yeah. are really and it just so happens that you know we're more or less based here. I, mean, I live right here in Westchester. So you know. are, are you lifelong resident here? I basically except for a couple of years yeah. I was MIA. You know, but yeah. So you knew about the cat probably, you know. Yes. Not the in between years where this was like you know I don't know yeah. like a fiesta. Chicken fights and, and bar mitzvahs. Bar mitzvahs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The glory days. Yeah. Wait, you guys never played bar mitzvahs here? <laughs> um, so. It's a point of pride, I think, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> let me also talk to you, because, Byron, you, you obviously have other stuff that you're doing, and you're, do you, yeah. ever, do you ever have any time at home between touring with these two Not guys? really, no. Yeah, really? No. It's the only free time that we have. Pretty much. Yeah. And I'm glad we can make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I got a plane to catch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> really, no, I know. <laughs> Thanks for fitting me in. Um, so how do you juggle, I mean, these two bands and, you know... Um, you know, it's the art of threading the needle. I, I just, I just basically, as long as everybody I work with is mad at me all the time, then I know I'm threading the needle just right. Nice. Burn the candle at both ends. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> until there's nothing left. Um, obviously, second album, I'm, I'm assuming, is in the works. Yeah. I mean, yeah. why wouldn't it be? We start last week of July. We're going to begin uh, recording the next, the next record. Yeah. Okay. Cool. A anything you can tell us about it? The vibe of the record? I mean. How many songs have you been, how many songs have you guys actually been like living with for a while that you're going to put on the new oh. record? Oh, I mean, you know, uh, gosh. I would say right now, three or four complete, but Pete and I are in writing mode right now yeah, too, okay. so we're going to flesh out. I mean, our plan was to do an EP right now and just get something out quickly. But honestly, if the songs keep coming, we're just gonna end up recording. Don't do an EP, man. Everyone record. does EPs. Everyone and their mother does EPs. Yeah, it's, it's speed. Like, it's, it's speed. Like, it's like, let's just do three speed, songs you know. and release an album. No, because he just keeps your shit out there faster right. and yeah, faster. I, I, you I know. totally yeah, get yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Rih yeah. Rihanna just pumps out single after single. Right, yeah. Well, but, yeah. It's, like, it's like the 60s again. Right? right, you know, it's before the single, great era. Single driven. I mean, it's kind of a Less sad. Fun. It's a sad thought that like the art of the album is kind of like ran its course. I mean, that's that's kind Which, of. But it seems like that's kind of what happened. Yeah. We're back to pre-album rock right. when it was like singles. Yeah, you know? singles, man. And, and the funny thing is that Lost Leaders really started more as a record than as a band originally. Right. And it was, it, I mean, it is Byron and I. Um, but you know, we have a touring band that you know really is a band. But we, we had this collection of songs and we wanted to create an album, like drop the needle and just sit yeah. there like an idiot drooling on yourself for 40 minutes until it's over, you know? And that was the whole- I do that when I'm not yeah. making an album. Totally. Yeah. And, and even when we were doing it, we were like, nobody's gonna care, nobody's gonna yes. listen to it like this, but That's this right. is what we like. Right. And so we made an album. And so I don't know if we're gonna, we may not be able to control ourselves from doing that again. Right. Because, you know, we grew up with album rock. We love albums, you know, as an art form. It's, it's curated, but, man. It's curated. You gotta go on a journey, I mean, to me. So, like, releasing yeah. a song or two, I mean, I get it from a market perspective, you're just out there. 
Uh, but as Byron said, we may not be able to resist and end up with a whole record. Oh, but, we, live, we live in a <laughs> selfie stick world right now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but, I like, you, know. Uh, you know, one positive, though, out of this whole, I mean, and nothing against EPs, because, I mean, look, a lot of the music's amazing. Some of my best friends are EPs. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, but one of, the, one of the great things that, and you mentioned the peak, and I listen to Alt Nation on Sirius a lot, and it's, it's great how we're going back where the DJ has a lot of power and yeah. can play what they like yeah. and whether or not you're signed or you're unsigned, you know, it's just good music's good music. So I guess that's, that's a huge plus that we're going back into that time as well. So. That, that's true, and the, the peak is unique in that respect. You don't get too many stations of that size that are willing to embrace something that's indie, you know, the way that they have. I mean, you know, I guess because Byron was playing with Levon Helm and we come out of that world and we recorded it there and all that. I mean, there's a story behind the record and the band that I guess is, is cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, Chris Herman is the program director at the Peak. You know, he, he did this because he loved, he got, he told me that when he first heard that record, he, put it in his car and that like it was you know he just listened to the whole thing sitting in his driveway all the way through to the end you know because it just like he got it and so. he can't and he can't do that with the EP he'll only get halfway home <laughs> it's true. true so at the very least send him on his way so he can go home or he can right? sit on the highway till we record right. the next five songs <laughs> or he can just have it on loop <laughs> this poor guy can't get home because of you guys <laughs> <laughs> or you could record five songs and then flip them backward True. And then listen to them backward the second True. half of the record. True. Good content. That? I like that's, that's, that idea. You keep saying record art. now. I'm visualizing Chris Herman putting a record in his tape deck for some reason. I want to invent it's that. I want to invent the in cash vinyl player. If anyone did, oh, he could, would you have, could you imagine he that? Would that would be fucking awesome. I mean, Except not? he would skip every five seconds. Not if it's done right. True. True. <laughs> Let's get on that. Can we patent that shit? Even though sure. we have absolutely we'll no get capability. Jim, we'll get Jimmy Iovine involved. It'll be perfect. Awesome. So, what does your summer look like? More writing, I know you have a couple of gigs here or there. I'm assuming just really writing up the second half. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're playing Pleasantville Music Festival uh, July 11th. We're doing something in Asbury Park with WBJB in August. And other than that, we're between recording. that, yeah, the, the last week of August and the first week of, uh, sorry, the last week of July and the first week of August, we've got just blocked out just for us. And that's going to be our recording time. Yeah. You guys like an old married couple at this point, like you know. In a way, I mean, it's it's because I know. can see it. It's almost like a Harry Met Sally vibe, where like <laughs> you're like finishing off his sentences. Am I Meg Ryan? Or, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, we're going to just stop there because I thought of the orgasm scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we can edit all this out. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of a kid show. That yeah. it's not canceled. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell, like, you guys actually not just musically, right? You just kind of... Well, I mean, you know, it's like any band, off. man. You know, yeah. when you spend a lot of time together, you know, on stage, touring, and just dealing with the logistics of running a band and all that stuff, you know, yeah, you get to know each other really, really well. I mean, you know, cool, for sure. Did you like how the, the Porchester train just came by and honked a little bit? Did it add some ambiance? It's hot. The train doesn't honk, though. Uh, they do, or they toot? What do you call toot, I guess. What they do is they wait until you're under the, under the tracks and they scare yeah. the shit out of you. They just come in I just nowhere. Like, yeah. I just like how there's a Port Chester train too that just came. Or maybe that wasn't, maybe I tooted. <laughs> Who knows what happened? We're going to find this shit out when we play it back. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Dude, great to see you. Thank you for having us, man. Thanks.